As we begin our study of algebra, we're going to be looking at um, how things in real life and just different types of numbers, how they form patterns. And with those patterns, we're going to actually be making predictions. And as we study those patterns, when they are, patterns are found, what we can do is actually fit them into different function families. So the first thing that we're going to be looking at when I'm lo talking about function families is exactly what is a function. So at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to determine whether a relation is a function. So let's jump right into the notes here. First of all, a function is a rule that establishes a relationship between two quantities, the input and the output. All right, just a couple notes and then we'll do lots of examples so you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. For each input, there is exactly one output, and that's going to be our standby reasoning for why is something a function, and more than one input can have the same output. So something is happening, something is forcing something else to have a pattern and then come up with some answers. So just as some examples that I can think of that actually work, you probably, when you visited, if you were in the cafeteria today, or if you went to any sort of restaurant at all, or you went to Meyers or a store or anything like that, you probably didn't realize that you were entering a function, but actually you were. Because um, there's a pattern between the how many items that you buy and the prices that you're going to pay, or which items you buy and the price you have to pay. So what I'm going to do is just do a few examples. If you can think of the item as being the input and the price being the output, okay? What we're gonna be looking at, um, we basically just need to make sure each item has exactly one price and more than one item can have the same price. So let me just give you a couple examples. Let's say I went to Meyer and I'm just buying a few items. Item one that I put on my on the conveyor belt when I go to checkout costs $2. And then item two that was on my conveyor belt was $3.75. Item three was $5.20. So notice for each of these, every single item has exactly one price. It's not going to give me a choice um, when I go through there, um, this would not happen. Item two could not also be three dollars because if I bought item number two, it couldn't be three seventy-five and three dollars. That would be faulty, or we, I'd tell the manager I want the lower price instead of the higher price. So that can't happen. So as soon as I enter this two into that situation, that would not be a function because every item has to have exactly one price. Right now. Um, I'm going to think about the dollar menu, and maybe it's a dollar ten now or whatever, at McDonald's. Um, you can think of, let's just go ahead, we're still going to be the item is my input, and the price will be my output. So let's say, um, it's getting close to Christmas time, so let's say I want to do an eggnog shake. So an eggnog shake might be a dollar, well actually, that would not be on the dollar menu. Let me think, think of some things that would be on the dollar menu. Um, let's say a small drink might be a dollar and then I believe probably a hamburger would be a dollar and small fries would probably be a dollar I think a McChicken sandwich is a dollar so you'll notice every item has exactly one price so it meets that first definition but you'll notice it is okay for some of the items to all have the same price. There's nothing wrong with that. So as we're looking through examples, what we'll be looking for is to make sure that every input does have one output and um, that it's okay for more than one output to have the same input. So let's try some examples that don't look like that and see if we can figure it out. All right, the first one is if something is in tabular form, which means there's just a table, we're going to decide if something is a function or not, and we'll try to explain. So first one, we're going to look at my x and my, my, my y. My x is my input, and my y is my output. And if you wanna think of this first one as being my item, and the second one being my price. Okay, item zero is $3, item one is a dollar, item three is $5, and item four is $6. So every single item, has one price, and so yes, we'd be fine. So on this one, when it says, are the following functions, we're going to say yes, and then we have to explain, so must do. The, on this one, I would just say every input has 
exactly one output. All right, example two, again, we can think of items in price or input output. Item zero is $3, item two is $7, item three is $2, and item five is also seven dollars. So first of all, I'm gonna look at each of these items are all different items and they have prices, so we should be all set with that. And then if I look at it, um, I'm going to maybe think, oh, that might be a trouble. Is it okay for item two and item five to both cost seven dollars? Yes, it is, just thinking back to the dollar menu example. So once again, for this one, it's gonna be a yes again, and then exactly the same explanation. Every input has exactly one output. All right, let's take a look at the third example. Um, item one is seven dollars, item three is eight dollars, item four is nine dollars, and item three now is ten dollars. So we've got a problem here because I'm gonna not be happy with this because how can item three be eight dollars and that same item be ten dollars? They have to make up their choice. So this is a big no and the reason is three has two outputs. That is not okay. Do with if the relation is written in point form. So we know by just by looking at these in points, this is x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y. And so basically all the x's are the inputs and the y's are outputs. So we can pretty much look at it the same way that we looked at it when it was in chart form. So I'm going to look at, okay, this basically means negative three is one dollar, negative two is a dollar, negative one is a dollar, zero is a dollar, and one is a dollar. And since they're all different items, um, they each have the same price, but that's okay because we saw that before from the dollar menu. This is totally fine being a function. So we're going to say, yes, this one is a function, and it is because it, um, oh, excuse me, every input has exactly one output. And it definitely, again, is okay that they all have the same output. All right, this next one we have one, three, two, four, three, five, one, five, and four, six. And I notice we've got a little issue because here we have one, three, and we have one, five. So the input of one has two different outputs, three and five. So this one is going to be a no, and that's because one has two outputs, and that is definitely not okay. All right, let's look at some functions, or not functions, in, um, situation form. This question says, are the following function statements true or false? And then explain. So number six says, the amount of refund you receive from the grocery store is a function of the number of cans you bring in to re be recycled. So it's basically saying, if I have a certain number of cans that I'm going to be recycled, um, is um, it a function if I look at the amount of refund you receive from the grocery store. So basically on this one, the number of cans is going to be my input and the amount of refund is going to be my output. So if we can think about this, we might even want to make ourselves a little table and just think about it. Um, if I brought in one can, at least in Michigan, my output would be 10 cents. If I brought in two cans, my refund would be 20 cents. If I brought in three cans, my refund would be 30 cents. So every time I brought in two cans, my refund would be 20 cents. I can't bring in two cans and have my refund be something different than 20 cents. So because every input does have an output, we are going to say that yes, this definitely is a function. So this is a true statement. All right, if we look at number seven, and it says in a classroom, a function pairs a student's name with their last name. So it's basically saying if you have a first name, so we'll let that first name be the input, um, we're going to pair it with their last name, which will be the output. So if we just start thinking about this, the first name, I can just start listing. Um, let's say I've got um, a Keith, and then we'll pair it with his last name, which would be, um, let's say, May. All right, and then let's say I have Madeline, and her last name is Smith. And then, this is a very popular name right now, so we've got another Madeline, and her last name is Adams. Okay, I've already shown you that um, we have an input, the input is Madeline, 
but there are two different last names. So this one would not be a function, so this is going to be a false statement, and it does say to explain. I'm going to say because um, a first name could be paired with more than one last name. All right, let's look at some graphs. These are the question again is are the following functions and to explain. Um, I'm going to do something that is called the vertical line test and you'll definitely want to write that down as well. Okay, the vertical line test, what it's going to do for us, it's just kind of a test to see does every input have just one output. So on this first one, if I'm doing the vertical line test, what I'm going to be doing is just drawing a, whoop, I'm gonna to try to draw a vertical line, sorry about that. Oh, these are not vertical, I apologize, okay. So we're going to draw some vertical lines through this function. And in order to pass the vertical line test, the vertical line can only pass through the relation one time. So notice this vertical line passes through the picture that was already there one time. Um, this next line crosses through that picture one time. The next one crosses through one time. The next one crosses through one time. So this one is a yes, and the reason that it is a yes is it's because it passes the vertical line test. Okay, this next one, if we go ahead and draw a few vertical lines, I'm gonna draw a vertical line oh goodness, right here. Draw another vertical line right there. Okay, now if I test these vertical lines, notice this first vertical line touches up at the top and then it touches down again at the bottom. Same thing with the second one, it touches at the top and touches down at the bottom. A vertical line is only allowed to pass through one time because what this is showing, like on this one, the input of two actually has two different outputs. So we've got two points for it. So that's what makes it not a function. So this one is going to be a no, and it's just because it does not pass the vertical line test. All right, and then number 10, if we look at it, there's a couple ways that we could look at this one. First of all, if we wanted to, I'll do my best here. Oh, goodness, try to draw vertical lines through the points. And if I draw vertical lines through the points, it never says connect the points, so do not connect them. If I draw vertical lines through the points, notice it only passes through the points one time. So this is going to be a yes. Right? Another way of looking at this is we could have um, written each of these as points, and then we could have been able to tell from that way as well. So hopefully now you're familiar with um, something being a function or not.